Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Doctors Changing Medicine podcast. And I have an amazing guest for us, Dr. Nina Melanin. And she is, I don't even know, we're just going to unpack her story, right? Because there are a lot of dimensions. I would say she's a slasher, like she's a, she's an interventional pulmonologist slash, you know, all these other things you're going to find out um, about. So we're going to get right into it. Thank you so much, Dr. Nina, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you and sharing my adventures. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I want you to walk me through how somebody who is an interventional pulmonologist is like, well, this is not enough. I'm going to set up the first successful private program for IP in Philadelphia. Like wasn't being an interventional pulmonologist enough? (laughs) It would have been enough in a perfect system, I guess. Um, I think that the challenge has always been to serve my patient to the best of my ability without being hindered by anything surrounding it. And I went from academia to private hospitals to nonprofit hospitals. And I felt that at one point or another, I was blocked and stopped be it from the infrastructure, the administration, whatever it is. And my goal really is I'm absolutely passionate about diagnosing lung cancer and ultimately achieving the state shift. Diagnose it early, you can offer a cure. And to do that, I absolutely believe that you have to educate the population, the community, advocate for them. But you always assume as you grow up in medicine that the hospitals are going to be there supporting your Uh, next adventure to be able to deliver the best possible care, because after all, that's usually their logo and that's how they go. But to my surprise, as I started developing programs into hospitals, there is much more to that than just sitting down saying, I'm going to do the best I can do for you patients. That's not nearly enough for the bean counters. And uh, that's when I started thinking as I encountered people in boardrooms that no, it doesn't matter if I tell them I'm going to save X amount of lives. They don't care. And I knew exactly how to be able to set up the program to make the interventional pulmonology program successful. Uh, And that's when I started, okay, medicine, my degree in medicine is not going to be enough. And that's when I plunged to complete my MBA in the night classes (laughs) to be able to even get through the door to talk to a, I don't want to say bean counter, but to talk to an administrator because uh, they look at your CV, they see, okay, physician, good, but you know nothing about business. And I was shocked that um, I had to battle up that hill to just do what I do best. And uh, suddenly I had the epiphany one day and I'm like, why do I need permission? Wow, I do like that. Way. And uh, I'm like, I know exactly what I need. I know exactly what the team members are. So I'm like hitting my head against this wall, begging them to tell them to do it my way. Forget it. Like, you know what? I'm walking. It was hard. (laughs) It was nerve wracking. And um, especially for a surgical specialty. And I'm sure out there, tons of surgical specialties are like, well, how do you get the machines? How do you- I want to know, and I'm not a surgical specialty. I'm like, wait a minute, this is surgical. Yes. And um, then I started discovering the industries. The industries are businesses and they want to ultimately be able to help not only to sell their products, obviously, but to be able to impact the community. So we sit down around the table and you make a deal. Hey, I don't have the $500,000 to give you right off the bat. I'm not a hospital, but I have the patients and we can make an impact together. And that's how you learn to speak a new language. And trust me, the medical language is the most complex. So if you're able to do that, everything else, if you put your mind into it, you'll get it done. So that's how we started. I and, love uh, that. It's, uh, it was a battle. It's not easy, but it's definitely doable. Definitely doable. How about definitely worth it? Totally. Totally 100%. worth it. So, so you tell your own schedule. And you help your patients. No one is telling you you can't accept this insurance or that insurance. I think 
definitely the drop that's made the glass overflow is a patient meeting me in the parking lot of the hospital asking me what to do with his stent in his airway because now they refuse to schedule him because they don't take his insurance anymore. Oh no. Oh wow. Oh and wow. So when I went back and I asked the front desk, how come so-and-so wasn't scheduled? They're like, oh, we don't take his insurance anymore. I'm like, I don't care right now about the insurance. We need to make sure that he's taken care of. Well, he's just going to have to go find somebody else. I'm like, but you work for me. And they're like, no, we don't. No, we no, for the no. hospital. That's, so, that's- so now that you've done this, what has been, what's the difference in your in your ability to do what you want to do, right? Which is detect lung cancer earlier and be in a position to potentially offer a cure, if you will. Yes. So big difference, because now there is no incentive to make your salary. There is no incentive to see as many patients as possible. Nobody is there knocking on your door, telling you 15 minutes is up, go to the next one. But more importantly, you get to tell and say who is part of your team. You don't ask an administrator to hire that respiratory therapist or that medical assistant or that navigator. You don't have all that red tape. It's a different type of red tape, but you don't have those limitations that are in your field. Therefore, your algorithmic pathway is established by you. Your team members are picked by you and you know how to go from point A to point Z and you have no blame in game because you put your mind to it. You know how to get it done you will be able to get it done. So your passion with your compassion end up leading you exactly where you need to be. And massive impacts on the community because if patients feel it, they feel that every team member is in it for the love of medicine and delivery of care. We answer the phones 24 seven, we are there for them. And more importantly, we give them their lives back. Wow. We know families, uh, I mean, even, the development of educational programs. Like I started doing, um, which I think it's crazy, the free time, half an hour once a week. Oh, no, no, I'm coming to that. Cause I saw it, I was blo- I was like, wait a minute. Oh, I'm, I'm coming for you. I it, just have one question before we go there. I'm coming for you. <laughs> so ultimately, honestly, it's the fact that I was able to do what I do without wasting my time and wasting my energy on convincing somebody else who knows nothing about my business to do it my way. A waste of time. I love this. Now, I know a doctor is thinking, well, I want to hear the numbers. Of course, I don't need you to give me numbers, but they're like, I don't see how I can maintain my salary, all of that stuff, if I go about go out on myself on my own, right? Like, you know, the hospital is taking care of all this stuff. I don't think I can pull it off. What will you tell that doctor? I will tell them that your salary might not be 500,000, but making 250 and be able to actually have your free time, spend time with your family, be able to impact your patient the way you want them to be impacted and take care of them and keep them out of hospital. So you're not around them like crazy in every million possible hospital. Totally worth it. I mean, who would say no to like your six week vacation, whenever you want it, being off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, attending all the family affairs if you need to, and do what you like. So we should be looking at the whole, so so yes, it is financially viable to do that. And look at the whole package, not just the money number, exactly. right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because how much is six weeks worth of vacation to you? How much is every week being a long weekend to you, right? How, how, how much is that worth Choice. to you? I, I and love the it. Choices are what are you what are you looking for? And it's not may, might not be for everybody for everybody. It's really you need to sit down, look at the pros and cons, and see what your passion is is about, what your purpose is, why are you doing what you're doing? Are you in it for the money? And some people are in it for the money. Okay, fine. Well, go ahead. And then they don't feel so bad dealing with administrators. And others are in it for a complete different purpose. So I think ultimately is when you define why you're here, what your purpose is, and like everybody's talking nowadays about legacies, you end up setting yourself on the course that is right for you. And you might flip flop from one to the next, like they say, pause and pivot, right? Yeah. And um, ultimately, when you look at, when I look at my lifeline, who would have thought that this little girl growing up in Morocco would have ended up, right? 
couldn't speak a word of English before 1998. Wow. And here I am. And accomplishing really my dream of becoming a doctor, I would have never thought, I didn't even know what interventional pulmonology was about. Who would have thought that I would And here you are. Yes. With a phenomenal team, amazing women. And um, yes, and guiding others to be able to accomplish just what they would like in life. So listen, guys, if you're listening on the podcast, you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel because I'm sure you can hear the passion, but you need to see it. (laughs) You need to see it. All right. So you did this and this is so amazing. And I'm thinking, wow, she's amazing. And then I come across Dr. Dr. Nina's lung foundation. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. So these two things are not enough. We need a whole foundation. Tell me about that. Right. Cause that's why you have the 30 minute Uh, sessions. I'm like, what is she she doing? It doesn't take much, but it takes a lot of time. So here's the deal. Despite doing everything that I do, I love, I know it might sound absolutely uh, lame, but I love helping. And 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and most of my visits are 45 minutes to an hour with the patients. Sometimes that's just not enough. Yeah. Because by the time you try to really teach them, and this is what I usually do, 101 physiology, here I come. I think, I truly believe if you teach the patient exactly how everything functions mechanically, they will be able to better understand their symptoms and therefore help themselves by expressing exactly what it is they're feeling based on that picture that you gave them. And so I go through that. And then I want to talk about other things their social life, their environment, especially for lungs with the pollution. And we tend to really cut, be cut short because we just don't have the time. Yeah. I'm like, what if, and specifically with the COVID, we were completely swamped. I'm like, okay, let's just start half an hour once a week. How much is that? Is that going to take much? No. And I know most of the topics that I talk about. I'm like, maybe there will be interest. Maybe there wouldn't be. So I gave it a try. And every week on Thursday at 530, everybody knows it now. Dr. Nina would be doing a session and I pick a topic and before it was just a COVID update, understanding and explaining to patients what are their needs, what do they need to do, how to adjust, how to color code their kids clothes just to not have to worry about school, not school and camp, little things. And one thing led to the other and now we are at 150 uh, viewers that actually sit down and they're autom- it's like turning on a show. It's funny, isn't it? It's like, I don't that is so good. You go on TV, I just go on my Zoom and everybody knows exactly where the room is and they show up at 5.30. Some of them come with their wine, with their meals. <laughs> Literally. Hanging out with Dr. Nina. That's it. And we talk about everything. Some others have questions about what they encounter in life, family members that get sick and they don't understand what's going on. So it, I see it as a community outreach program to allow them to be empowered, to be coached and to advocate for themselves. And honestly, at the end of each session, I feel good. I mean, (laughs) of course you do. You're doing what you love. You're helping. It's like you go down in that airway, you find that big tumor, you core it out, the lungs that re-expand. Oh my God, they can get extubated. That's amazing. So. Okay. So, and, and people are like, she's amazing. I'm going like, she's amazing. While I was still looking, then I see women in interventional (laughs) pulmonology. I'm like, hang on. Like her being an interventional pulmonologist is not enough. She has to go private, which very few people do. That's not enough. She does the foundation and now she's supporting women in interventional pulmonology. Please explain why. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I I already was like, yeah, you got to stop no more. And I'm learning to say no, but you know, sometimes you feel like you're going to run out of time. And I, it's difficult to say, why not? Um, I can help the patients and help them advocate for themselves. And ultimately, even if I had 500 people logging in every Thursday, I'm never going to be as impactful as if I scale it by teaching it. And that's my model scale it by teaching it. When the industries come to me and like, oh, sell your algorithm, your way of establishing this program. I'm like, why sell it? I have all these interventional pulmonologists. It's such a small specialty right now, very niche. Yeah. And you have all these women that are maybe 20, 10 to 20% that are going to be struggling because they just graduate and they don't know anything about 
administration establishing a program, growing a program, impacting your community because they get thrown from being an attendant, a fellow, to becoming an attendant in these massive healthcare system. I'm like, and it's not fair. And talking to other really gurus of interventional pulmonology, Dr. Lamb, oh my gosh, Gatan, all of these women that have struggled and I started doing their vlogs because I wanted their story to be shared. It's not easy coming from other countries, struggling and not having children or having children and dealing with cancer at the same time and literally looking around and there's nobody telling you, I'll take your call. Mm -hmm. And you have a colleague that has to get credential in your hospital because they understand really what you're going through to cover for you. So ultimately I said, okay, we sat down and we we're like, we've been talking about women in interventional pulmonology. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's get it done. And they all looked and they're like, okay. I'm like, okay, we got this. LLC, nonprofit, whatever it is, sit down, get it done, put the application through, go for the nonprofit. And the next meeting, I'm like, we're official guys. They're like, we are like, we're official. Let's get this done. Let's get this. Game. You are amazing. Yeah. Let me tell you why I'm blown away, because what you do is really the essence of what this podcast and this movement is about. It's about doctors taking back control, right? Going back, taking the drive, going to the driver's seat, taking hold of the steering wheel and saying, I am moving this in the direction I think you should go in. Because what you've done is you've made changes for your patients. You've made changes for their families. You've made changes for doctors in medicine. That is all round. It doesn't really get much better than that, except you do it, right? Then you, you come up with more stuff. But this is, this is so good. Now, there are many doctors in many fields who are thinking of helping in different ways, right? Um, some within medicine, some outside of medicine, like some subsect, they want to do something, they want to help. But they maybe before listening to this episode, they thought this is outside of my reach. Well, like it's not something I can do. What do you say to that doctor? I think anything you put your mind to it, you can do. And ultimately, you know, whenever we're thrown in residency, internship, have you ever wondered and said, this is not something I can do when you show up in that ER and they have five admissions for you? Oh, no, it you just, do it. Tighten your belt and you get it done. Yeah. When somebody is coding and they have no access, you actually take the time to ponder and say, can I get an access? No, you just jump on there and you try to get it done. Same thing. In life, whatever comes your way, if you put your mind to it and if you see there is a necessity and needs that will ultimately impact somebody's life, let's get it done. Stop looking done. for the no. Stop looking for, oh my gosh, I'm not really sure what it entails to get the nonprofit. It, okay, let's look it up. God bless Google. You don't have to go to an Instagram. <laughs> Seriously, growing up, I remember when I had to write a paper, let's go to the library, pull up the books, borrow it. Is it here? Oh God, somebody else borrowed. You don't even have that limitation anymore. All you have to do is your phone, sit down, you thought about it, let's Google it. Okay, this is what you need to do, let's get it done. And worst case scenario, if you can't get it done, there is tons of avenues where people will be more than willing to help you get it done. And it's just a matter of defining really your goals, who you wanna impact, and more importantly, how do you feel about it? Because if you don't have the passion behind it, don't waste your time doing it just so you can say, I'm doing it on my CV. Honestly, half of the stuff that I'm doing are not on my CV. You need to because, update it. <laughs> yes, I do. Because I just want, I think that we as physicians, we impact the few within our direct community, but we have such a bigger potential to impact so many more worldwide. And that's why when I did web, the goal is that if I impact a thousand patients, 3000 patients, and I teach other physicians how to be able to be just as amazing, imagine just a hundred women in interventional pulmonology impacted each 3000. Look at that. Exponentially can scale it. I love it. And the rest is history. And like you said, let's take medicine back. Let's take the it back. Way we're dealing with it right now. Our healthcare crisis, our public health system, our health disparities, it's because we are sucked into that wheel. And we, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. We all know this. Well, it's time to stop thinking, oh my gosh, this is not doing well. Let's get it done. 
Oh my and worst goodness. case, you're stumble and you're fall and it doesn't get, you are not successful. So what? Let's do it a different way. You know, it's like knitting. You start knitting and at one point you lose count. It doesn't look right. You end it and you just go ahead and do it again. Seriously, no harm done. You and I are going to have to do coffee. This is so good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Now, so I always say, I always end with this. This is not a podcast. This is a movement. And at the end of every episode, I'm like, whoever's listening, you have to share this episode, right? Because where there's a million of us. If we don't like the system, we can change it. We have power. There's power in numbers. So what would you say is the reason a doctor should 100% share this episode absolutely you should share it because it's education it's awareness it's an advocacy movement advocate for yourself and my story honestly i love sharing it in a sense that if i wouldn't have heard other having similar successes and failures i wouldn't have been able to learn i listen to you i listen to your podcast and i'm like oh my god you do the yes, podcast? I, I listen to your podcast. I'm like, oh, who's Dr. Una? And I'm listening. And I mean, listening to Sasha Shilkot. And I, I there's so many. And I was like, okay. I mean, look at what Sasha did with Brave Enough. Amazing. And Just it amazing. It actually stimulated and fed that seed that was there. We all have that seed in us. We just need to nurture it. It's like almost an orchid. Don't overwater it. Don't let it dry out completely, just enough so it blooms on time. And it's not because one year the orchid doesn't bloom that it's, oh God, it's dead, it's done. No, sometimes you need to take the time off. And I think by educating one another and listening to each other's stories, you'd be surprised how many of us actually have similar stories, yes. struggles, yes. and we don't dare being like Brene Brown, see, being vulnerable, because we are, after all, physicians, and we are literally geared to always showing strength. And like she says, vulnerable is strength. It's okay. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is, wow. Okay, so listen, guys, I think you're going to have to listen to this again. And... <laughs> And take notes this time, but thank you so much for sharing your story Absolutely. and sharing your passion. Thank you so much for holding space. Thank you so much for making the decision to do this because it's not just about you and you're living that out. It's about all the other people that I can show what's possible, all the other people that I can help make a difference. And together we can literally change the world. Absolutely. We can and I teach, teach, teach and preach, please. And it starts with residents, medical students. They're all watching. They're all growing. Oh, my goodness. All right. Tell people where to find you. All right. I am at lunghealthservices.com. You can see how I build up the practice. DrNinaLongCare.com is the patient coaching program that I actually developed in there. And, of course, women in interventional pulmonology and advanced bronchoscopy. And there, the stories, oh, my gosh, they're just coming month after month and hopefully we will be able to enlighten, share, mentor uh, as many as possible. So thank you for listening. And it's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. All right, people, listen again, share the episode and take that next step. You heard what she said, right? In residency, nobody asks for, your, asks for your opinion. This is just what needed to be done and you did it. So maybe we try this again, right? But this time <laughs> with our careers and taking control of our careers, our businesses, the change we want to make in the world. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And everyone listening, I will see you on the next episode of the Doctors Changing Medicine podcast.